when the company manager told me to, to take my squad and clean off that ridge, and I only had one man, you know, and he added them other three. But, you know, I don't remember feeling any fear going up the hill. I just figured this is it. It's, uh, I guess there was not one chance in the, I didn't figure there was a chance in a thousand to make it to the top. And, uh, <laughs> so, but, but so, that's an order, cleaned it off. <laughs> so you, you thought you were going to die on yeah, the hill? Oh yeah, yes I did. I never, I never figured out to come, uh, I never figured I'd live to be 25 years old. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, was, uh, uh, there was five of us started up the hill and only two of us went up the hill. And the night of November 27th, mm -hmm. I think I don't know about that, maybe yeah. some. That, that's uh, where I really got indoctrinated. <laughs> they lost contact with the platoon. And the company commander told me to go up and, and find them and tell them to come down the road, okay? And uh, I asked him where they were, and he said, I don't know, their son should be up somewhere on that ridge. And the Chinese were moving that night, they were all around us. They were uh, attacking us, you know, and you could hear them talking. And, uh, and he sent another young guy, the guy had just come in, I imagine he wasn't over 18 years old. But, uh, and I, he wasn't with, he wasn't with me, but he just was there and he sent him with me. Well, we went parkway up the hill and I heard the Chinese talking just over the top of the hill and, and I looked around and I put a motion him to get down. And he was already <laughs> down the hill. <laughs> but anyway, so we went through the gauntlet, which is part of was a pass where so many of the well, so many of the Americans got killed in that pass there. And uh, it was that was wicked. And as tired as you were, you were still fighting. You know, I mean, and you could see the Chinese up on the hill. And this is like even at night, there's enough light you could see movement up there. And uh, and they were there even in the daytime. It was a 24-hour-a-day battle in there. When you're in a position like that, the way we always did it, and I, this is not something that the Army taught, it was something we did. Uh, you've got eight rounds in your, in your M1. In your left hand, you've got another clip with eight rounds in it on, the, on your rifle. Uh, when you empty your first clip, it flies out, and you grab this one, it, it, you've got the bullets pointing the right direction already, you just put, you just slam it in there and you got another eight rounds. you got 16 rounds that you can fire almost. But there were Chinese, that night, you know, there were Chinese, you'd hear them talking over this way and you move around. <laughs> it was, and there, there was, they, at that time the hills were bare, there was no trees in Korea. The, when them Chinese came over the hill next to me, they were close and there, there was a tree about that high. And I can remember, I flopped down behind it, and there was a, I, I, I don't know if I counted them or not, but I think there was 11 Chinese in that group. Well, just when the, number seven was talking. And uh, what I did was, I, I couldn't see the sights on my rifle, but I could see the end of the barrel, and I put the end of the barrel on his feet. I figured I can hit him. <laughs> <laughs> so you were actually going to shoot at an entire platoon of Chinese? <laughs> if, if they saw me, I would have shot. Okay. I was not trying to start a fight there, no. Okay. <laughs> well, the uh, lieutenant told me. He, that was one of the reasons he was, he pra praised me for what I did, because he said we, they were shooting anything that moved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had no code words or anything that you could say, but, and uh, if you talked anyhow, it, there were more Chinese around than there was Americans. So. It's not like you could yell out that you were here and don't shoot at me. Yeah. That um, the moonlight was sort of reflecting off the snow, so it was yeah. really easy to see. That's it. You could see it. Maybe a man at a hundred yards. That you know. I mean, there was uh, it was snow on the ground. They would. They would. Um, the bulldozers would shove the vehicles over the side of the hill with the dead bodies of the Americans still inside. If there was bodies in them, I mean, yeah, and yeah. and uh, and. Some of them, some of them trucks, I, I remember seeing guys from artillery and stuff crawl into the back of a, of a six by six. The Pusan perimeter was a little bit different. That was a month's battle and our casualties were maybe a squad at a time or something like that. Uh, 
but not 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 like the half the company. In in the gauntlet, I don't know how, what our casualties were. I didn't try to follow that through, but uh, I think there was about maybe 40 left out of 180 years. When they asked you to be a squad leader, did it seem like a huge responsibility to have other guys' lives in your hands? Well, you do anyway. I mean, uh, if, if I was a company runner... Uh, Going back to Hong Song, when you were hit, um, what did it feel like getting getting shot? You, you described it in the book as kind of like getting uh, snapped with a wet dish towel, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes out. Can, yeah, can you talk more about that? Like, what did it feel it like? It knocked me down to one knee. Uh, for just a second, but uh, I got right up again. What, what did you think um, after you had gotten hit? Were you did um, did you did you think it, maybe this is? Um, I saw him over there, and I dropped to one knee, and, and was fi I fired uh, a clip. I think of uh, I was on the one knee, and, and just as I raised up off from one knee, and I thought about this afterwards too. Uh, he probably had a beat on me right around here, and as I stood up. I went over this way and got it down, down here because I was just standing up as, as he hit me. But uh, so had you not stood up, you would have been hit in the chest. Either. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, it was just a thought afterwards. You know that uh, I, I was just standing. I knew I was just getting up when when he hit me. So there was, there was quite a bunch of them I know that had gotten out of there, and they were up above us. It was. You might say a suicide to try and to fight anymore. I, I, I couldn't fight anymore anyway. So your main thoughts were just getting out off that hill. And then how long I laid in the rock, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'd used my bandage to put on that uh, Jones that morning, so I didn't have a bandage and. Uh, I don't think anybody else there did either. There was there was a bunch of them. Like I say, I don't know how long I laid there. It's kind of confusing because I, I figured that uh, I probably got hit shortly after noon. But when we got out of there, back to our own lines, I, either it was getting dark or I was losing. Losing <laughs> <laughs> blood. <laughs> you <laughs> going, going out of one of the two. They, they had uh, four jeeps and trailers and, and a M16 half track with. Quad 50s on it, they were going to try and run the roadblock. And it was, they figured it was about five miles. And uh, they loaded me on the trailer facing backwards. There was some sleeping bags and stuff in there, and, and uh, I was the only one in that trailer. But the Jeeps were packed full. And I don't know how many on the, on the M16. But uh, we run the roadblock, and there were Chinese at, at like in there were Chinese right along the road, within ten feet of the jeep. But some of them were just they had big grins on. They didn't have any rifles or nothing. They were just uh, when I saw him, I mean, they uh, just uh, bang right now, and he just slowly. He didn't he didn't fall down right now. I just kind of almost like stood there. <laughs> he was that close and looking. He looking in your eye. It's a different thing than one that's. I think he knew it. He goofed articles, but the Chinese felt that uh, the Americans wouldn't come off the road and come up the hills after them. They were protect the, the Americans were protecting the guns and stuff that were on the road. They, they had the road, but the hills were that belonged to the Chinese. And I, I was close to him, linked to this house or less, you know. What I mean, when I shot him, and Brown fired too. I mean, uh, but. He was facing me, and on, right at the belt on the left side, he was all blood. And that would indicate to me that he was hit by a round from behind. Uh, like when I got hit, the bullet went in through my belt here and came out about three inches from my spine. Well, this here never bled. It's just a matter of, a, it was a, just an explosion, like a big blue-red flash, and then part, you could see the Jeep. It, I'm, I'm going to guess that there was a... Uh, when the jeep went off, it went flipping, and I, you couldn't tell which was bodies and which was sleeping bags. It was just a matter of a second, and then it's gone. Uh, the temperature did get down to 28 below zero, is what they said. At that time, they had taken away every other sleeping bag. Well, we had everybody had a sleeping bag to start with, mm -hmm. 
And then when I got that cold, uh, one of the companies they crawled in the sleeping bag, and most of them were bayoneted right in the sleeping bag. So uh, they uh, took away half the sleeping bags and gave that a wool army blanket put over your shoulders. But at, when it gets below zero, that don't do it. <laughs>